Hey guys, welcome back to the garage today. Today we're gonna do a quick video and do an unboxing of some Warp 9 wheels here. Uh, so these are gonna be actually for a Suron. Um, however, obviously I can get them for dirt bikes and everything else. So this will be for a Suron or a Teleria. Um, and like I said, we can get them for, for pretty much every, every bike, whatever's on Warp 9's website, I can get them for you. So feel free to reach out and I get you a quote for the wheels. Um, it'll be a little bit discounted off of what Warp 9's website is. So I'm just gonna open this up here and turn it off to the side. Sorry, I'm doing this without Nate here today. So I'm working all by myself. So. In the box, it looks like each wheel is going to be individually boxed. So we're going to go ahead and just pull these out. All right, a little challenging with one hand, but I got the front wheel out here. Let's cut it open here. As you can tell, the boxes are just plain cardboard boxes. Nothing special about these. So... Wow, look at that. It's a good looking wheel right there. So we've got orange nipples, an orange hub, black hoop and black spokes. Um, just so you guys know, the wheels are pretty much standard pricing. Um, if you change the hub color and the rim color, those are all pretty standard pricing on those. Um, when you add a nipple color, or a spoke color, you're gonna add a little bit of a charge to your wheel. And you can see it's got the Warp 9 front rotor on there. Also comes with some directions. Now, if you get some wheels from me or you buy them yourself, however you do it, pay attention to these break-in procedures. They're very, very important. Sorry, having trouble unrolling it. They're very, very important. Um, if you don't take care of the wheel, it's not going to take care of you. So if you don't do these break-in procedures, your wheel's not going to last. So make sure to follow these really good. So we're going to put those off to the side to give to my client. Um, Warp 9 going to throw a couple stickers in here. And it looks like... Uh, some kind of directions to clean the anodized parts. So this gentleman also got a rim lock. So this is also an addition. Um, so you can see the rim lock comes through. So this is gonna be an addition to the wheel. They don't come standard with them. So you need to select the option to add the rim lock or if you're getting them from me, I will ask you whether or not you want a rim lock. So yeah, overall they're super clean. Um, the only thing that doesn't come on these, which is kind of a surprise, is a rim strip. So if you buy them and you have me mount the tires, I'm going to give you a rim strip. However, if you're buying them and I'm shipping them directly to you or you're buying them somewhere else, just make sure you get a rim strip for whatever size. This is going to be a 21 inch rim. So he's going to put a 21 in the front and an 18 in the rear. So let's grab the rear and check that one out. So this is the rear here. And I've already cut the I already cut the tape off, but very similar to the front. The directions don't come on this one. I guess when you get a set, they just give you one set of directions. The rim lock, the brake rotor, and this one's gonna come with a sprocket up on it. So yeah. It looks good. So these are the wheels. Like I said, they are really, really good quality. Warp 9 offers a great warranty if anything ever happens to them. Send them back, pay 60 bucks, and they will fix or replace whatever needs to be replaced. And yeah. So let's get into just throwing the wheel. We're going to do the front wheel for right now. And it'll show you how to mount a tire and uh, put a tube inside of these things. All right, so again, sorry for the, I'm using a tripod here. Nate's not here today, so um, I am gonna just do this myself. This is the wheel. 
I like to use a five gallon bucket. This one's actually a double stack five gallon bucket, but a five gallon bucket works good if you don't have a wheel stand. I don't do a lot of wheels here, so I, um, I don't really have a stand. I don't have a need for it. Um, so the first thing what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the rim lock out. Now, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. So my way might not be the best way, but this is what works for me as far as putting wheels on. I know that there's there's other ways to do it. Um, this isn't a matter of who's right and who's wrong. This is just the way that I find works best for me. So we're gonna put a rim strip on. Okay, go ahead and put the hole. The hole is gonna go where your valve stem goes. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and put our rim strip on here. And we're gonna make sure it's not twisted. So it's gonna kind of stretch out over the wheel and we're just gonna line the hole up. So you can see right here, it's lined up. Great. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the, start the tire. So let me grab the tire. All right, so I got everything prepped here and these are the tires that we're gonna be putting on. These are Shinko two, uh, 240s, I believe. So they're the Shinko two, sorry, 241s, if I'm not mistaken. They're a trial tire. Um, so these are pretty good for riding on the street, but also if you're trying to get off the street and get on the road. Now, the first thing you wanna do with any tire is you're gonna go around the edge and you're gonna to look to see if they're directional. Um, if you see an arrow facing one way, that, that's always gonna face the direction of travel. So if the front wheel is gonna roll like this, this direction, your arrow would face this way. Um, and so look on both sides of the tires and make sure that you don't have a direction on here. These are universal, so these can go on either direction. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just try to put this tire on here. We're gonna just put the, the lower lip on. So just the, the under part, if you can see, it's gonna be the under part. What I like to use is good old fashioned Windex. And I'm just gonna get the tire nice and covered in, in the Windex. This will help it slide on there so you're not getting it all sticky with the, the rubber to rubber. Now for these, a lot of the times you can really just kind of press them, press them a decent amount of the way on there. Um, some tires are gonna be easier than others. So we're just gonna start moving around the tire. And then what I'm gonna do is for me, I use three tire irons. I use one smaller spoon and two longer tire irons. So you can check the link below. I'll have some links to these. Um, you could definitely do it with two. Three makes it easy. Four probably makes it really easy, but that's too much moving parts. So for three for me works really good. Now also, cause they're new rims, you do wanna be careful. You're not gonna scratch them up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start one tire iron over here and I'm just gonna use that to kind of hold it back and I'm gonna use another one on this side. And what we're gonna do is, because we're gonna try not to scratch these, we're just gonna slowly pry this back and then pry this back. Now that those are both back, now we can take our third one. It doesn't matter which one you use for it. Um, and we're gonna tuck it under there and we're gonna just put it on here like that. We'll pull out that one. Um, because these tires are, are pretty loose, let's try to spin this around and get a better angle. Because these tires are pretty loose, um, it shouldn't be a problem. I can usually just go right here and go ahead and put the rest of the, the bottom lip on. Yep, so now that we have our bottom lip on there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, go ahead and we're gonna put our rim lock back in. So you can see now our tire is just, just the top lips hanging over the edge. So what we'll do is we're gonna come over to here now this is a little tricky, but you'll get the hang of it. You could hold the wheel open and we're gonna just pull out the rim strip just on that portion where we're gonna be putting the rim lock under it. So let's reach in here and grab the rubber strip out. Sometimes it's a little hard. I'm actually gonna grab one more tool. You don't need this one but it definitely makes it easier. You can see it's got kind of a lip here. It allows you to, to pull the tire back and open it up. So this allows you some more room for your hands to get in there. 
and you see that made it way easier for me to get that out oh so that was the one with the with for the uh for the nipple so we're gonna actually find our other hole which is gonna be back here and we're gonna do the same thing And again, sometimes it's hard to just get your fingers under the rubber, under the rubber rim strip, but that looks like it. So now that you got that out, we're gonna just take the, the rim lock here and we're just gonna slide it in here and line the hole up. So now that we've got it through, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna loosely put our rim lock nut on or washer and then our nut and I'm just gonna go in maybe two turns or so just to hold it in place then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and we are gonna put our rim strip over the rim lock so this is gonna go over the top of the rim lock to hold it in place so that will go over it it's hard to see if even if I pull the camera down here, it'd be hard to see, but basically you have the rim strip layering on top of the rim lock like that. So now that that's held in place, what we can do is we can put our tube in. So for the tube, um, what I did was I put just a little bit of air in here so it's not completely flat. So you can see there's just a little bit of air and I put some baby powder on here. So that's what all this white stuff is, is just baby powder. I just sprinkle it on. This prevents the wheel from be, uh, the tube from getting real sticky, and um, and it also helps it move inside of the wheel. So this will last through the life of uh, through the life of the the tube here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take one of the nuts off of the valve stem. So we're just going to pop one nut off and the cap, and then we're going to tighten this one down. These are usually 12 millimeters. So I'll grab a 12 millimeter wrench and we're just gonna go ahead and you don't need to over tighten this, just tighten it down snug, it's not going anywhere. I've actually seen people tighten them down so much they just rip the valve stem right off. So now that we've got that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna find our valve stem hole, which is somewhere around here. right here so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just start putting the tube in with the valve stem lined up with the hole and you're gonna make sure you don't um, twist the tube so it doesn't matter if you push it in there that's fine but just don't twist it um, basically you don't want it to do to do this that's what you don't want it to do so we're just gonna push it in around the edge and we're gonna wait to pull the valve stem through. So you're just gonna go around the tire here. Push the tube in there. And sometimes at the end, it's gonna to wanna to pop out around the wheel, so. Just try to get it as far down as you can so that it stays in there. And then like I said, the last part, it really wants to pull the, the tube out off the rim. So you kind of have to use two hands and get it down there as far as you can. And you want to get it over the rim lock. I'm at the rim lock right now. You want to make sure you get it over the rim lock and not between the rim lock and the rim. And it looks like we're almost all the way in here. Again, it definitely wants to try to push off. So you kind of have to hold it and push it in there so it doesn't come off the the rim
Okay, so now that we got that in there, our nipple hole is right here. If you can see that. And what it looks like is that potentially our nipple, when we put the tube in, is just a little bit off. Our, our hole is here, our nipple's here. So what I like to do, and sometimes you can do it, sometimes you can't, is just twist the, twist the, the rim inside of the tire and that should get you lined up. So that got us lined up. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna use this tool again. It makes it a lot easier. You don't need it, but it, it you know, it makes your job easier. So just gonna feed our nipple through. There is a tool to help you do this. Uh, I used to use it, but it seems like it's sometimes easier just to do it like this. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put it facing away from me, all the way away from me. And I'm just gonna reach in there. pop it through so it does take a little bit of fiddling um, but once you get it it'll pop right through so the next thing I'm gonna do is I am just gonna take the second nut here and I'm just gonna put it on the the valve and I'm just gonna go lightly on there you don't need to go all the way um, so just like that. And now we're gonna start putting the, um, the other edge of the tire on. The best way to do this is actually to start at the rim lock. So I'm gonna have the rim lock at 12 o'clock for me. So it's facing straight away from me. And we're gonna do is we're gonna just start with our two bigger tire irons and we're gonna go one on each side of the rim lock. And we're gonna stay kind of close to the rim lock. That way we don't have too much to push on here. And we're just gonna pull it back. And at the same time, we're going to push the rim lock in. So we're going to make sure the rim lock gets all the way inside of there. And we're going to let those sit here. And then we're going to just start working our way around the tire. And I'm going to just be careful. I don't want to damage these brand new Warp 9s. So I'm going to be really careful when I'm doing this to not damage them. And also be careful to not pop the tube. So sometimes it makes sense to take smaller bites. And when I say bite, I mean just bring your, your pry bar closer to the other one, which would be a smaller bite. So that would be a, a pretty small bite. But when you're starting, when you're starting off, you can actually kind of take some bigger ones. So this one's, you can see the distance between here is a little bit more. And we're just gonna pull it on. And so now we've got, we got about half of it on. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put some more Windex on. This is gonna help it slide on there nice and easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go one more on this side. And I'm gonna just, I wanna get rid of the, the small one. It doesn't work good for the end of the tire. So we're gonna put that in there. And there you go. So we just have this part left. Now the key is making sure the tire is in the center of the wheel. You don't want it up on the lip or on the bead of the wheel uh, because it will not stretch really good. So what I do is I just take my hands and just squeeze the tire together. Um, this way I know it's in the middle of the rim and I have enough room. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna just finish this off, change my angle here. I'll move the camera a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put some some weight on the wheel here for this last bit. The last piece, we're going to just do one pry between these right here. So usually this is the way I like to do it at the end. And if you're having trouble getting this under here, you can just bring these forward. But for the last piece, I'm gonna just try to get some leverage right here. And you see it just popped right on. And with no damage to the wheel, so that's really good. So that's how you mount the tire. We're all mounted up, no damage. We just got to clean off the white baby powder off of there and we'll fill it with some air. All right, so 
your wheels on, your tires on, your tubes in there. The last thing to do is just go ahead and add some air. So we're gonna we're gonna just watch the tire blow up around here and then we'll tighten everything down. So and right now you're listening for air leaks. Doesn't sound like we have any, so that's the best news ever. You always want to make sure you don't have any leaks after you do this. So as you can see, the bead's still not popped from here to here. It is over here, so we're just gonna put some more air in. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're just gonna go ahead and tighten this valve stem nut down. And we're gonna tighten our rim lock. Now the rim locks don't need to be over tightened, but you do want them snug so they don't, so they don't, your tire doesn't slip on the, the wheel when you're riding. So we're just gonna go ahead and snug that down. Perfect. All right, so wheel is done. Looks really good. Warp 9 makes really great wheels. And again, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. We'll see you guys on the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Check out our other videos. Leave a comment if you have questions. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Wide open out.